Greetings. Welcome to another Flojo University webinar. And my name is Ian Taylor, Director of Product Innovation here at BD Life Science Informatics. Today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about traditional compensation. To get us started, uh, this is the Flojo workspace. And as you can see, I've got no samples loaded here. So let's start by adding some samples. First of all, I'm just going to find with the finder my compensation controls, which are here in this folder. And I'm just going to go ahead and load those into the Flojo workspace by dragging and dropping, just like you see there. Now, one of the things that a lot of users will note immediately when you first load samples into the workspace, the compensation icon here at the top of the workspace, or if we look into the configure, or sorry, tools window, is grayed out. So compensation is not available yet, and you might ask, why not? We've got compensation controls in the workspace. Well, there are two different criteria that are required before this button will become activated. And that is number one, you've got to have more than one compensation control loaded into your compensation group. Okay, check that box. The other thing you've got to do is actually select the compensation group. So now that we've selected the compensation group, you can see the compensation icon here in tools is available and also at the top of the workspace. So now we're free to go ahead and select compensation. Um, just a quick note before I go there, I want to point out that my compensation controls were automatically added to my compensation group. And that's happening in part because in my preferences, I've got them set under compensation to add any files that contain either a file name comp, uh, control, comp, uh, or type comp, file name comp, or file name reference, because now more and more cytometers use a reference option for compensation as opposed to comp, the traditional way. Okay, uh, now that we've got that out of the way, I will actually launch the compensation wizard, and you'll see the very first window that pops up in case uh, Flojo can't figure out which parameter is associated with which, uh, with which of your controls in the comp group, it's gonna ask you to choose your parameters. So I'm just gonna choose a few of these parameters and we'll run compensation on these first few parameters there. Uh, I'm also having this remove the width and height parameters, otherwise this list can get quite messy and it's difficult to select just the area parameters that we're typically interested in looking at. Okay, from my list of detectors, I've chosen the ones I'm interested in and I'm just gonna click choose selected parameters. And what that's gonna trigger is a whole set of calculations in the background whereby Flojo tries to identify the size population on the basis of forward scatter versus side scatter for any single stain controls that it finds in the compensation group as well as for our unstained control, if it's gonna utilize the unstained control going forward. So um, in this case, it looks like we're actually using a negative peak and not the unstained control, and that can be fine. Um, just to keep this video short and sweet, I'm gonna walk you through this very, very quickly. Um, what I like to normally do is just, first of all, double check that the parameters that have been selected are actually the ones that I intend to compensate. If you notice that there's parameters here that you don't want to include, or maybe you're missing a few parameters that you want to add, you can always click on this parameter header here and choose choose parameters and that will give you back the option to select parameters that might be missing or to remove certain parameters if you did not want to include them. In this case, I'm fine with those parameters. Those are the ones that I just checked. Um, next thing you should do is look a little bit further to the right and notice that we're selecting a sample for each parameter. And so in this case, we've got the single stain control parameter for each uh, detector correctly assigned. And finally, the comp name. You can adjust the comp name if you want to, but I'm just gonna leave the default here, comp, with my detector name listed there. Um, next, you're gonna look through your negatives and positives to make sure that the correct negative and positive control populations are selected for each parameter. But you might wonder, well, how would I know just based on the name here? You probably wouldn't. And so you need to scroll through this list at the bottom to actually double check that the correct negative and positive peaks are selected for each of the histograms associated with your various detectors. You should also double check that you're not calculating spectral compensation unless you want to. And um, we'll cover that in another lesson in case you are interested in doing spectral compensation in Flojo. So I'm gonna keep scrolling through my list and oh, I notice a problem spot here. It looks like we're incorrectly assigning a peak to the positive for V570. The positive peak is always shown in green and the negative is shown in blue. So let's dig in here. Just by double clicking on the graph, I can open up the graph window in Flojo and I can make adjustments to the gate there. Okay, that looks a little bit more like my positive peak. And now that's adjusted and 
refreshed the compensation calculation. Now we're, we're fine to move on to look through this list some more. Oh, there's another problem area. Let's make sure that we select only the positive peak and not the negative and positive peak for our positive control population. And keep scrolling. Oh, there's another one that missed. Um, this one seems to have only gated the negative. So let's move that range gate to include only the positive. That looks a little bit better. Being a little bit quick and sloppy with this, but you kind of get the idea. All the way along, you might have noticed that this little blue icon in the top right said finalized. And that simply means that Flojo was able to calculate a compensation matrix, but may not have been an appropriate compensation matrix until you've finalized your gates here down below. Um, if you actually haven't selected a set of populations, or if those populations selected don't contain enough events, for example, and the compensation calculation cannot be completed, then you'll actually see something here that mentions um, uh, a calculation error, and you'll have to go back and rectify that in the area below before you can actually view your matrix. Okay, and finally, for traditional compensation, this is quite simple to move on to the next step. We simply click View Matrix. And when you click View Matrix, it's gonna open up the compensation editor window. So I like to make it really clear whenever I'm talking to researchers, this is the compensation editor, and this is the compensation wizard. We've now finished with the compensation wizard, but if I decided that I wanna come back and calculate a new compensation matrix, just realize that you're going to have to create a brand new matrix because we've already uh, viewed a matrix in the compensation editor. This matrix is now finalized, and we would have to move on and create a new compensation if we wanted to, to make any adjustments here in the compensation wizard. For now, I'm done with the wizard, so I'll close out of that screen. And we can look at the compensation that's been calculated for our single stain controls um, thus far. And in there, you can see the various spillover percentages that was calculated for each color into each detector. Each of the columns here is the detector, and each of the rows here is a different color that's spilling into that detector to some degree or another. If you notice some negative values in there, as long as they're fairly low, that is pretty, uh, pretty normal and kind of expected. If you see uh, values that are getting higher here, that just means that you have some bad spillover maybe occurring between two uh, between a particular parameter and its associated detector in the columns there. If you wanna just visualize the way that compensation is changing your data, you can look through this n by n graphic, which will show you each parameter versus every conjugate parameter to see how that's changing your data. Your uncompensated data is obviously shown in the turquoise green here. And if we uncheck that box, you'll see compensated values are in black in the background. And you can also view this by uh, particular parameter, or you can just look at all the histograms if you'd rather see this in a univariate space. Sometimes that's a little bit more simple. You can also change your preview sample. Here I'm looking at actually one of the single stain controls, but we could look at this in an experimental sample. Once you're satisfied with the compensation matrix that you've generated, you can actually apply that compensation matrix by dragging this little M icon into your samples, and that can apply to a single sample or I could drag it up to the group and apply it to all samples. And we'll see that the compensation badge color here that's red appears to the left of the samples, just indicating that those samples, in fact, all of the samples, including our experimental samples, have been compensated using this red matrix. Last thing I'd like to point out here, um, there are a couple other options for, um, for compensation ma uh, matrix correction. And if you have any questions on that, please reach out to flojo at media.com and we'll be happy to answer any questions you might have going forward. Um, you may also want to double check your SSM. So if you're doing things like characterizing your um, machine over time, uh, or you wanna compare with somebody else's panel, you can look at the SSM that's generated for your, um, for your compensation by just clicking that little SSM option and then choosing display. And that will display the SSM that's been calculated or the spillover spreading matrix associated with the error in compensation for your data. Uh, and with that, I want to thank you all for visiting this uh, Flojo University webinar. And if you have any further questions, please reach out. Um, thanks again.